All right, everyone, welcome to one other episode. This is like episode four of Will It VR. Uh, we're going to do Star Chart. I've been having some trouble with this series because I've been having trouble getting 3D encoding to work properly so that when you fire up this in the YouTube VR app, it just shows up in 3D because frankly, that's the best place to watch this on the Oculus Go uh, is in the YouTube VR app. And it doesn't have any way you can change side by side to 3D. So I've been struggling so bad to figure it out and I finally got it working. So watch this in uh, the YouTube VR app, Oculus Go or probably Cardboard Daydream. And I don't know, do they have YouTube VR for Steam VR or Oculus Rift? Probably, I would imagine. Uh, watch it in something like that and all right, Let's check it out. Okay guys, this is an amazing app. I think it's quite amazing. Explore mode. Let's try this one. There is Earth. You can swipe on the pad and rotate around. This is seriously an amazing program. Everybody should buy this program. I've seen some bad reviews, but I think they didn't know how to use it. Check it out, click on it. Oh, look at that, I'm holding the earth right now. I'm totally holding it. If you click on it again, we're gonna go to the earth and it's gonna become very large. Oh, now I'm scared. Now I'm afraid of heights. I love like, like that flare over there from the sun. That's cool. Okay. So, yes, this is where I live. I live in Medford, Oregon. You are here. That's me. Anchorage learn about different places and this looks so clear it looks so good a cool time you are here I can't click on me but okay yep that's what time it is right now what is that like 8 at yeah, 816 New York it's 1116 all right London. 4.16 in the morning. Look at that. Look at the atmospheric effects. I love it. The moon. Oops. I think I clicked on Venus. Yeah, I did. I clicked on Venus. I don't want to do Venus yet. I want to do the moon. Check it out. We're going there. Yes. If you click on here, we'll travel to into the moon. Here we go. Oh yeah. Roger Neil, we got a if you give us crew and data, we got the loads for you. Huh, that's interesting. 
It's a flag, it's probably bleached white. Check it out, there's the module right, um, above the moon. We totally went to the moon. And we should just go there again, right? Just like, to check it out again. Didn't, didn't we? Westinghouse. I wish I could like turn around. That is a cool sight. Oh wait, there we go. We can change it like that. Okay, so let's do. Wow, that is cool. What is this? That is cool. That's right, the reflector. All right. Let's say we blow this popsicle stand. Let's check out somewhere else. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. But you know what we can do while we're here? Sky view, check it out. Okay, so I am actually facing, while I'm making this video, I'm facing west. No, east. Okay. So it shows us where things are. You just have to tell it where east is, or, you know, you have to adjust that. Meteor showers. Nice. Yep, the sun, okay. Where is the moon? There's Mars. This is really cool. I love this. You can check out the constellations. You can see exactly where the stars are. There's the moon. At. Okay, no moon tonight. I guess it's on the other side of the Earth. Okay. The Andriconis. Oh, look at this. I'm just holding this giant star. Pleiades. Pleiades are freaking awesome. Oops. You just hold them like that. You guys, this is just so freaking awesome. I love it. I love it. Just, it just looks so great. 
Hell, I had to buy this for Steam VR. I hope it's there. Let's go to Venus. There we go, Venus. Look how tiny it looks. It's scaled down until we fly into it. Alright, here we go. Whoa, now it's big. Here's Jupiter. Also on this, I think it actually shows the ring around Neptune on this app, which is pretty sick. Look how tiny it looks. Of its moons. Wow, it looks so sick. I gotta see if this is on uh, Steam VR. I totally gotta get it. It is so cool to be able to hold it like that. It looks so good. And I have a uh, Samsung Odyssey Plus, and I'm and and that's better than this, but this still looks amazing. It looks amazing. It's like ominous. I'm, I'm serious. It is ominous. It's Io. Let's travel to Io. See Jupiter. Dang. Phobos and Demios. Phobos. Holding it. You can actually travel to Mars on here. It takes you to a place with a rover. You can get down on the surface. Good crash site. Science Laboratory. Oops. Here we go. I'm clicking. Now, if you guys ever played. Hello Mars, their rover model is just infinitely more detailed than this. This is like such a low polygon count and low texture detail, but it's still a cool part of the app for sure. For sure. on the surface of Mars. What is that? That's Phobos? All 
I did not know that. That's Phobos. Oh, look at this desk storm. Or maybe it's not a storm. They're in the Pleiades. So that is Phobos. I guess Phobos. Yeah, we're never going to go to Mars. That's not going to happen. All right, Phobos. Neptune, let's do Neptune. Yep, I think this is the one that shows the ring. I think that's this app. As far as I know, Jupiter has a ring too, but you can't see it on here. Maybe it's not this app. I don't know what app I'm thinking about then. It's not Uranus, is it? I'm pretty sure it was Neptune. Oh, I guess it's Uranus. No, I thought Neptune has one too. Ferdinand, what is that? Is that a moon? Must be one of its moons. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I know I'm wearing a VR headset right now and I'm sitting down, but the immersion of stuff like this, feeling like I'm out in the vastness of space, it does make me feel a little bit uneasy. But, I mean, to its credit, it's very immersive for me, anyhow. Wow, I didn't know it had all these moons. Portia, Portia, which one is it? Ariel. Nut doesn't say anything about it. Uh, Julia. This is so freaking cool. You guys, everybody should buy this app. Seriously. I think this is just freaking awesome. What is this? Whoa. Margaret. What you doing, Margaret? Oh, and another thing too is you can move your thumb around and it'll tell you on the track or on the touchpad different statistics about the celestial body that you have selected. Holy cow! Greater than a thousand standard atmospheres is the surface pressure. Yeah, we'd be squashed. Twenty-seven natural satellites. Dang! This is definitely an educational app for sure. 
right, so. Oh. We got back here. Check this out. Ori. I'm not I'm not sure what that word means. I guess I could ask Google right now, but I won't. I'll spare everybody from getting their Google Home menus activated. The orrery is a view of the solar system we are familiar with from children's educational books and science posters. Although size and distance are not to scale, the positions of the planets are accurate with respect to each other, as are their orbital periods and rotations. So does that mean this is where the, the closest star to Earth is of course our own sun. The sun is the central gravitational force that holds the solar system together. It contains 99.9% .9 of the mass of the solar system and could fit 1,300,000 Earths inside it. Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun, has the most eccentric and fastest orbit in the solar system, with only 88 Earth days per Mercurian year. It is also the smallest of the planets and experiences the widest range in surface temperature. Due to their similar size and mass, Venus is sometimes referred to as Earth's sister planet. Venus's surface is obscured by a layer of sulfuric acid clouds with an atmospheric pressure 92 times greater than Earth's. At opposition, it is brighter than any other object in the night sky, apart from the moon, and can sometimes be seen in a midday clear sky. The birthplace of humanity, Earth, is the only habitable planet in the solar system, and the only planet anywhere known to harbor life. A beautiful, small, rocky planet boasting an atmosphere, magnetosphere, and liquid water, Earth is perfectly suited for life, as we know it. Despite being smaller than Earth, Mars boasts both Olympus Mons, the highest known mountain, and Valles Marineris, one of the largest canyons in the solar system. Visible to the naked eye, Mars has been a prevalent part of astronomy, astrology and mythology across cultures and time. The asteroid belt is made up of materials left over from the formation of the solar system. These materials were never incorporated into a planet due to their proximity to Jupiter's strong gravity. Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system and is categorized a gas giant. Jupiter has the shortest day of all the planets, turning on its axis once every nine hours and 55 minutes. The Great Red Spot is a huge storm visible on Jupiter's surface that has raged for centuries and is so large that three Earths could fit inside it. Although all the gas giants have some form of ring system, Saturn's is by far the largest and widely considered the most beautiful 
It consists of billions of tiny water ice particles extending over 120,000 kilometers out from Saturn, but on average only 20 meters thick. Due to its size and composition, Saturn's ring system is the only one visible through a telescope. All the gas giants have them. That means even Neptune. Uranus is a gas giant whose ring system, whilst not as bright as Saturn's, is much more prominent than either Jupiter's or Neptune's. Uranus is the coldest planet in our solar system, and along with Neptune is sometimes called an ice giant. With an axial tilt of 97 degrees, Uranus seems to lie sideways in its orbit around the Sun. Neptune is the eighth and farthest planet from the Sun. Traces of methane which absorb red light give Neptune its beautiful deep blue color. Unlike Uranus, Neptune has an active and visible weather pattern, with high-speed winds having been recorded at up to 600 meters per second. wonder how you record something like that. It's not 601 meters. It's not 599 meters. It's, it's exactly 600. Previously known as the ninth planet, Pluto is now known as one of the five dwarf planets. Pluto is so small that seven moons in the solar system are larger than it, including Earth's own moon. Pluto's largest moon, Charon, is so large that they form a binary system orbiting each other. Sitting within the distant Kuiper Belt region, Pluto takes 248 years to orbit the Sun, and has an average orbital distance 40 times greater than Earth's. Now we can stand, oh check it out, that's Pluto, shows the orbits. We can select the planets, we can select basically everything. That's, that's one of the problems if you don't actually get it directly on. There we go. 4.95 astronomical units. Ah, see, that's you can improve with this. Half a bit. Just gonna pick up Saturn, 
Oops. Just gonna pick it up. Bam. Slam it against itself. Man, this would be so awesome in six degrees of freedom. It's really cool the way it is, but. Sequence star one million three hundred ninety one thousand kilometers in diameter. Like, how do they know that? Is that an estimate or is that like that's exactly the diameter of the sun? We, we know for sure. Don't even argue with us because science. Olympus Mons. Phobos. And this is Moments in Time. I don't think I've ever been in this part before. This is cool. You went there. Here's what we haven't done. Nice. Plutonium-238, that's what my Saturn runs on. Where do they come up with these acronyms? Pepsi. Yeah, 
It won't let me rotate like up and up and down, only around it. Pluto has a heart-shaped surface texture. Where is that? Like an actual heart or Pluto? Okay, I don't see a heart there, so I must be missing something. Oh, okay, I guess now I kind of see it. Sharon. It's absolutely insane that we sent probes out there. It's amazing. What is that? Natural satellite. Second moon of Pluto. What? Probably what it actually looks like, right? Because... We have a probe out there, satellite out there. What the heck? Fourth moon of Pluto, natural satellite. That looks kind of crazy. Let's check it out. Looks like a mushroom. It's a floating mushroom. Look at that. Hydra. Fifth moon of Pluto. What? Fifth dwarf planet from the sun. Artist impression. This is cool. All right, guys, thank you for joining me on this episode. I think it's the fourth episode. I'm pretty sure it's the fourth. This, this series has had a rough launch, but um, hopefully I'll do a lot more with the ability to properly encode in 3D. And watch this in YouTube VR. Enjoy it. If you guys like this, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down. And for those of you that actually watched to the end especially, tell me how you watch this because I never know, like, there's different ways of encoding. I wish YouTube would give you the option of watching it in SBS or uh, Anaglyph, uh, but then also play it in 3D automatically in a VR, in the VR app, but it doesn't do that. So like on my computer, if I'm watching something I encoded and I set it to 3D, on my computer it shows up as Anaglyph and I have to use these and I can't actually watch it as a side-by-side -side video, uh, so I don't get to see it in color. And I wish they just did 3D better. But anyhow, that's what we have for now. And I uh, hope you guys like this, and I'll catch you later. Thanks.